One of the first things your ostomy nurse will teach you is how to empty your pouch. The best time to empty your pouch is when it is one-third full or whenever you feel it is needed for comfort or convenience. However, it's best not to allow the pouch to fill more than halfway since this can make emptying the pouch more difficult. While in the hospital, the nurse may have you empty your pouch into a container rather than the toilet. To empty your pouch, begin by holding up the end of the pouch, then open the Velcro closure or unfasten the clamp. If using a pouch with a clamp, you can fold up or cuff the end of the pouch to help keep the opening clean. If using a pouch with a Velcro closure, cuffing is not necessary. Regardless of which pouch you have, drain the contents into the container. Then wipe the end of the pouch with a tissue by using a sliding movement away from the body. Be sure to get all the stool off the end of the pouch. This will help prevent odor. Finally, if you have a pouch with a Velcro closure, bend the small foam plate over the large foam plate. Roll the end of the pouch in two more times until the Velcro is visible. Then lay the Velcro tabs in place and press together. If you have a pouch with a clamp, Uncuff the end of the pouch and replace the clamp. Once the pouch is closed, the pouch will once again be odor-proof. Once you're out of the hospital and are moving around with less discomfort, you may find it more convenient to simply empty your pouch directly into a toilet. Practice these easy steps at home and you will find that emptying your pouch in any restroom will be simple, fast, and discreet. Sit back on the toilet and place the end of the pouch between your legs or stand and lean over the toilet. To prevent splashing, place tissue into the toilet or empty the pouch while flushing. Then simply follow the same cleaning steps as demonstrated earlier. If you are concerned about odor, you may find it beneficial to use liquid deodorizing drops in the pouch or spray a deodorizer in the air. When I feel that my pouch is uh full to the point I want to empty it. Uh, I, uh, of course, head to the toilet. Uh, it's no problem. Uh, undo the clip, uh, drop the, the uh, consonants, and then uh, clean it up with a piece of uh, toilet paper. And uh, it's really no problem. Uh, as far as going into a public restroom, it's exactly the same as before. The only difference is, is you're just doing something a little differently than other people do it. That's all. When you first leave the hospital, you may change the pouching system every three to five days, depending on your comfort and security. How long a pouch is worn will depend on your body, how active you are, how much output you have, and the type of pouch you use. Some people find that the mornings are a good time for changing the pouch before eating and drinking when the stoma is not active. Others take advantage of a quiet time during their day. You will find the routine that works best for you. When changing your pouch, make sure all of your supplies are within reach. These may include soft paper towels or a washcloth, warm water, a new pouch and adhesive, and if recommended by your ostomy nurse, paste and pouch deodorant. Begin with an empty pouch. Gently remove the adhesive, working slowly from the top to the bottom. Push down on the skin as you lift off the adhesive. Never rip or tear off the adhesive, since this could cause your skin to become red or sore. Place the used pouch in a disposable bag, offered by some manufacturers in their pouch boxes, or in a sealable plastic bag, and dispose of in a waste receptacle. Never flush a pouching system down a toilet. Next, use a soft paper towel or washcloth to wash and rinse the peristomal skin, which is the skin around the stoma. If you choose to use soap, use a mild soap without glycerins, oils, or deodorants. You may choose to clean the peristomal skin in the shower while you bathe. Whichever you choose, be sure to rinse thoroughly, as soaps, lotions, and creams can irritate skin, or prevent the adhesive from sticking. Finally, pat the skin dry. This is a good time to look at the stoma and the skin around it. The peristomal skin should look like the skin on the rest of your body, and the stoma should look red and moist. If it looks different to you or concerns you, contact your ostomy nurse. 
If you see some bleeding on the stoma, don't be alarmed. Some bleeding is normal. During the six to eight weeks after your operation, your stoma will decrease in size as it heals. Measure the stoma once a week during this time, and after this time, at least once a month. Take the measuring guide provided to you by your ostomy nurse and place it over your stoma. Using this measurement, trace the size and shape of the stoma onto the tracing guide and cut it out. The opening should be the same size as the stoma. Next, remove the protective paper from the adhesive. Center the adhesive around the stoma and press firmly against the skin. Warming the adhesive with your hands helps it adhere to the body. If your stoma becomes active during the pouch change, wipe the stool away with a tissue as your skin must be clean and dry while putting on the adhesive. Make sure the Velcro closure or clamp is securely fastened. Finally, if you are using a two-piece system, attach the pouch at this time. If you have questions or problems changing your pouch, ask your home health provider or ostomy nurse for assistance. At first, there was a little getting accustomed to uh, the ostomy and the management and the maintenance of it. And really, once you get used to it, there's nothing to it. You just go on your day, and it's like anything else that you would put in your day. It's a lot less of a burden than I thought it was going to be. Um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't require a lot of care. I mean, it takes me probably five minutes to, to clean my, my stoma and change the bag, so, which is good because I'm constantly going with the